You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. You got my message? I'm here, aren't I? I like these small parks. Have you seen the one in New York? Central Park. Smack in the middle of Manhattan. Heart of the city. It's like another planet. Hey, but don't go there after dark. What do you want, Marcus? Hey, no. How are you? Nice to see you. And whatever happened to the British sense of politeness? This isn't Moscow, Marcus. Or even Beirut. Why don't you come and work for us? I've already got a job. And you do it very well. At least as far as I can see. We pay better than MI6. What does Uncle Sam want? Hungary hasn't got any oil. Now play fair, Catherine. We don't only fight for oil. No, that's true. Sometimes you fight for gas. Why are we talking? I'm very busy at the moment. Bring me back a postcard from Budapest. Just a friendly warning. Those that seem to be our enemies frequently only seem to be. Our real enemies, they rarely show themselves. What are? The order has come through from Langley. No matter how bad it is, no one will come to your rescue. They want to know where all this leads. After all, even the agency doesn't have a bottomless pit of money. There's only so much money to go around. What's your county like? Somewhat Sotmar Bereg. Very beautiful. Not like you, of course, but beautiful in its own way. It's on the eastern side of my country. Near Croatia? <laughs> no, that's east to the south. You're so clever, so well travelled. You've gone everywhere. Hardly, Catherine. It is a big world out there. We must all do our best to see as much of it as we can. But my name, Laurent, means famous land. Do you own land? Yes, my family has owned land in Sabor Satmar Berek for a very long time, but is mostly nothing more than a watery marsh. Do you own? At London prices? No, not even a cat. That is a shame. Your bosses would not object to this? Object? To us. <laughs> uh, we are no longer in times of the KGB, if that's what you are meaning. I'm free to do as I please, so I assume, are you? Of course. Actually, I have some news. Oh. No, I'm not pregnant. Uh, what's your news, Catherine? One of the secretaries has dropped out of the Budapest trip. I'm going instead. Congratulations, you deserve it. You work very hard. Will you be there? We could meet up. I'd be very discreet. I could say I was going shopping or, or something like that. You would tell a lie to your superiors? It would only be a white lie. Well, I won't be there at the time of your trip, August, isn't it? Yes. But would you be so kind as do something for me? It's very safe. And he told them? In Hungarian? What? They weren't Russian. I had worked in Moscow, I knew Russian, I realised the difference, and so did they. They left the room, and then the thin one returned. He apologised again, said he hated the man that had called in the job, and gave me the keys to the car they had used. I don't know where they went, but he said something to me as he left. We cannot live in the past. What did you do then? I drove across Europe, from safe house to safe house, changing cars, recovering, thinking. Thinking about what? Thinking about you. I'm sorry, Catherine. I had no idea. I was picked up by the information office, Hungarian intelligence. They wanted to know what was the message from Moscow. Now, why didn't they just pick up the phone and speak to London Direct, or even Moscow itself? Did you never wonder? 
Why the elaborate meeting overlooking the Danube? All very Cold War. Why not just send an email? Why face to face? You had a shock, Catherine. Where did this request for just such a meeting come from? Uh, I don't. You told me to go. Who told you? Someone at your embassy, I'm sure. But who receives at your embassy intelligence about requests from the Russian intelligence world? If the SVR speaks to Budapest, it must go via Hungarian intelligence, which means you must be Hungarian intelligence. Budapest wanted to know what the message was, or wanted to know if the message was delivered. Now, why would that message be so dangerous? What scared Budapest so much that they would risk having me picked up by four incompetents on the chain bridge in broad daylight? Times are uncertain, Marcus. We have all seen the situation in the East. We know that Langley has been ruffling feathers in the Ukraine. Turkish intelligence has allowed your CIA to supply the rebels without dirtying its own hands. Oh, Gabrielle, such things are way above my pay grade. I could not even tell you where the Ukraine is. I think you have looked at the map in your time. The Papa Airbase does great work, but some might think it's on the wrong side of Hungary to be of true advantage to the United States. And where would you suggest we look to position such a new base? It is curious that you should ask such a question, Marcus, for I've been having some thoughts on that very subject. We all think of ourselves as the good guys or girls, wouldn't you say? I have never really thought about it. That we are the ones doing what is right, making things better, making things more secure for the future. I must think what you are doing is making life better for those in Hungary. To do as you ask me, I must believe that you are doing what is right, what is noble. I can only hope. Yes, I hope so too. But hope is only one thing. Reality, that is something different. Catherine, you have been through a terrible experience. I can, once again, only apologize. But not everyone wishes to embrace change. Not everyone seeks a world of peace. I'm sure everyone does, Catherine. Before your arrival, I was looking in today's newspaper. I have not yet had time to read it. A NATO exercise. The largest ever to be carried out. 40,000 troops, ships from several countries, air forces acting as one. All against a common enemy. An enemy that has never threatened us. An enemy you sent me to speak to. Catherine, I can only repeat that I'm sorry for how you were treated. Why did you want me to go? Was it because I was a pretty stranger at a party? Someone you thought would think she was doing very well just to be noticed. I don't blame you. We both thought we were fooling the other. Neither of us was fooling the other. Even those that told us to meet. Even they were not fooling anyone. Apart from fooling themselves. Those that so love the idea of secrets that they never ask if the secrets are real secrets or just reasons to keep playing the game. When the world has just moved on and the game has only become the justification within itself. What are you trying to say, Catherine? The Russians wanted a face-to-face -face with someone from the West because they no longer trusted their former allies, Eastern Europe. Now, why is that? I'm sure you would tell me. Because someone over here has too much to lose. The world isn't rushing to buy our cars anymore. We need something else to sell to pay the bills. Realising this, the Russians simply looked for someone they already knew. Someone low on the pecking order. Someone who would not be missed if it all went wrong. A foot soldier, in effect. I think that foot soldier was you. Which means you must have been SVR for years. You were also Hungarian intelligence. Maybe that is where Moscow made its mistake. Someone didn't want the message to get back to London. Or Washington. Catherine, 
You have had a terrible time. I can see that. You have been under such pressure. Then I thought, why would the Russians trust us? I'm sure you can understand the dilemma. I'm not following you. I'm sorry. Why would Moscow believe that, if they disarmed, that we would follow their example? You could never trust them, Catherine. They would never keep their word. We know them. They were with us on our streets, in our villages. For you, they were the enemy. For us, neighbors. Many in my country still remember the uprising in 1956. You think we are like them. All Eastern Europeans the same. This is not true. They seek only global domination. The world brought to heel. The hammer and the sickle displayed proudly above the nations of Europe. It took the Russians a long time to learn that the West could not be trusted. Agreement after agreement between Stalin and Truman broken over and over again. Kennedy was the last Western leader with the courage to openly say that those in the free world should re-examine their attitudes to the old Soviet Union. And the world saw the result. Only a fool would trust us. I trusted you and was a fool. I will find out what happened. That, I realised, was why Irina never asked me if the West would do the same. Moscow would not have trusted our reply. They weren't offering to disarm nuclear weapon for nuclear weapon. They were telling us, me, that they were going to do it, regardless of whether we did anything or not. The Cold War, the Spy War, the Future Wars, all brought to an end, and there was nothing the West could do to stop it. Some games are expensive, Susie, and I do not only mean in rubles. Some games cost lives. Too many lives. Now some games can be affordable, paid for, some no longer can. When Moscow speaks, it does not always make sense to those outside of the Kremlin. But with time, the whole world will start to understand. The game no longer turns a profit, and when that is the case, playing has become a foolish act. We will play no more. Whether the West continues to play is up to you. But we will spend no more on this game. It has always been immoral, and they were unnecessary. Some say those weapons have kept the peace. Then they are fooling themselves. Japan did not surrender because of nuclear bombs. They surrendered because we declared war on them. So few people have truly remembered the past. It becomes forgotten. I'm glad they sent you, Susie. It has been a while since we last met. I must get back to Red Square. You must be careful, Catherine. You must go home now, for now you are in danger. Do you know how big the United States nuclear defense budget is for the next 10 years? 348 billion dollars, that's 35 billion dollars a year. Do you really think the economy could afford to lose that from every city, town and local community across the country? What happens to the American defense budget of almost 600 billion dollars every year if Moscow throws in the towel and walks away? Your meeting on the chain bridge was not a quiet chat among silly women. This was economic warfare against the West. Over time, without armed conflict, the financial destruction across America world would reduce the states to a third world country. What happens if this offer from Irina makes it into the public's mind and the peoples of the West no longer have someone from the East to fear in the early hours of the morning? Could you not see that you were being played, testing an idea, just to see what would be our reaction, waiting to see how we would respond? How do you think the White House will take the end of global threat? How do you think the households across America will thank you for telling them Thanksgiving isn't going to happen this year? Nations fight for resources, but individuals sell their countries out for their own benefit. And to secure that money, there is nothing they will not do.